The way others perceive you is strongly based on how well you communicate. Your eloquence, which is defined as being persuasive in speaking or writing, is a powerful skill in attracting and retaining the luxury client. No matter what business you are in, long-term success is largely based on good communication. From the language you use in conversation to the way you write an email, all of it leaves an impression on others about your intelligence and experience. Right or wrong, other people's opinion of you is largely determined by the language and the manner in which you speak. Therefore, it's important to keep your communication in all their forms as professional as possible. Here are five principles of great communication. Number one, the I filter. When communicating with anyone in a professional capacity, whether it's buyer, seller, vendor, or whomever, minimize the use of certain words. The first word is I. This is because others do not want to hear about you. They want to hear about themselves. I sell every listing. I know the market. I'm the number one agent in my office. The I filter is something you use before sending out a written communication. Scan for any sentences that start with I or mention I more than once. When instances are found, rewrite the communication using alternative words. This exercise is a reminder to stay aware of your messaging and to make any delivery of information feel as client-centered as possible. When there is an I, replace it with another word and reformat the sentence. For example, instead of, I sell every listing, you would say, every listing of mine has sold. It's a minor shift. However, it moves the emphasis of the sentence from I to the subject you are describing. The next word is they. To a sophisticated person, this can sound like us versus them. It can sound like someone or something you are in opposition to. If you are talking about an agent, say a fellow agent, not they. If you're talking about a banker, say the banker. If it's about the buyers, say the buyers. Number two, four letter words. Now, what is considered profanity is highly subjective. And in the modern world, profanity is all around us, from our favorite shows on Netflix all the way up to the highest levels of government. It exists in every segment and part of our culture, and it is more accepted today than at any other time in history. Here's a word of advice, a best practice, and it stands in line with the art and intelligence of luxury real estate. Don't use profanity in professional settings, period. If there's a four-letter word you would not use in front of a judge in a court of law, then do not use it around the luxury consumer. This advice runs contrary to what you see on the selling luxury shows of reality TV. Those who sell celebrity real estate use words that get bleeped out all the time. However, it does not mean the rest of us should use them. Profanity has little value and can result in undesired consequences. Now, how you talk around your family, your significant other, your friends on the back patio. That's 100% your business. What we are referring to is questionable language in any professional setting, as it will more than likely have a negative effect on your reputation. Number three, filler words. These are the, um, uh, sort of, you know, just, like, Many people use these words every day without even realizing it. Overusing filler words can make you seem less confident and sound less intelligent. It may seem superficial, yet their use can distract from an otherwise compelling message. The best way to eliminate filler words from your conversation is to make those around you, such as a family member or friend, acutely aware that you are working to avoid them while speaking. For example, instead of, Whoa, this is like the best home we have seen. Say, wow, this is the best home we have seen. The same goes for just. Instead of saying, I'm just calling to check in on the offer, say, I'm calling to check in on the offer. Number four, use empowering words. Let's go back in time. Remember when you started in real estate and learned about what words to use based on who you were talking to? For example, with a seller, it's a house. With a buyer, it's a home. Or instead of saying contract, we say it's an agreement. Or we don't have a problem, we have a challenge. Or it's not cheaper, 
it's more economical. Or do not say purchase, say own. Or the classic one, don't say buy, say invest. For example, are you ready to buy this $1.8 million vacation home? Compared to, are you ready to invest in this $1.8 million vacation home? Small, yet empowering changes in the words you use creates an improved mindset and puts the focus on the positive elements of the subject matter. Number five, avoid insincere words. These are words and phrases that are used by real estate agents every day. You should minimize or eliminate them from your vocabulary as they sound ingenuine to the luxury consumer. The first is, honestly, can I be honest with you? Or in all honesty, in all honesty, this is the best home in the neighborhood. To be honest with you, this home is priced very well. Like a filler word, statements such as this can sound condescending and unintelligent. The luxury client expects you to be honest with them at all phases of every interaction, not only in certain moments or conversations. Along the same lines is, trust me, to be candid, to be transparent, or in full transparency. So instead of, trust me, this home is well-priced, say, based on what we have seen, this home is well-priced. Instead of, in full transparency, this home looks like a good value. Say, in consideration of all facts, this home looks like a good value. Along the same lines as any statement or claim such as ethical, trustworthy, high integrity, or I follow a code of ethics. We see this a lot in real estate, whether it's in personal advertising, the body of an agent's bio, or even right from the agent's mouth. These types of statements sound like something that would come out of a fly-by-night contractor's mouth right before they hand you an invoice that's 40% higher than you are anticipating. The fact they told you that they were ethical and high integrity now feels like a cover-up, as if they were on the defensive because of their guilty conscience. If you want people to think you are ethical and trustworthy, you don't have to tell them. Let your actions speak louder than your words, and how you serve a client will be the determinant of what you are in their eyes. Other than the influential conversation, my objective is to create a long-term relationship built on a foundation of trust. Talking about these topics has little relationship value to the luxury consumer. Another insincere word to avoid is anything related to apology, apologize, or I'm sorry. Unless it's for a serious mistake or a funeral, steer clear of these words. If you feel bad about something, then say regret or remiss or unfortunately. This is because I'm sorry, sorry to bother you, my apology or let me apologize has the tendency to cast you in the wrong light and creates a disequilibrium between you and the other person. If you are four minutes late to a showing, say, thanks for your patience, not, I'm sorry for being late. If you email the wrong addendum, say, that was inconvenient, thanks for understanding, not, so sorry, or my apology. If you're calling after business hours, say, I appreciate you taking my call after hours, not, I'm sorry to bother you. These are small elements that keep you and the other person in equilibrium, not at a place where they feel like you owe them something. It shows you recognize your own self-worth. If you're doing your job well and providing value, then you never need to apologize. Since so much of other people's perception of you and your business is based on how you communicate, never stop building your skills. The good news is how easy it is to make changes. You can implement everything learned here immediately in your business, starting with your very next interaction. The influential conversation is the I filter. Is this communication about me or the other person? This is a reminder for you to utilize the I filter in all your outgoing communications. It's always about the other person and getting them to the results they are seeking. Let's do this.